For this advanced technique, we're going to turn an audio recording into a MIDI instrument. Now the only thing I've done to this file since I recorded it was I added the natural vocal preset, which has its own set of effects. Notice there's even a de you can turn on and off. And it has a compressor and some EQ already applied. Now what I want to do is hide my library so we can focus, zoom in a little bit, and let me just play a little bit of the track. So this was just Emily doing a scale as she was warming up to record the mermaid vocal. Well, first thing I need to do is check the pitch. You need to check the pitch if you're going to be turning this into an instrument. So let's double click. Let's bring up our Flex. I can turn it on right there in the timeline or I can turn it on down here in my editor. I'll do that. So you can see it in both places. And here's my flex and as you can see there's the scale. I can touch any note and I can see it right there what note it is and they all look pretty good. A couple of them are just a smidge sharp. And so what I'll do is I'll just select all to get all the notes once I have one selected and then right click and just set them to perfect pitch. Again, because this is an instrument, I do want to make sure those are all dead on. And then the other thing I need to find out is what note she's actually singing. So if I look at this first one, I can see that's my F sharp. And then I have a G sharp. There's my A sharp, B, C sharp. Okay, so I want to know which notes I'm working with so when I create my instrument I can actually place them at least on the first starting note. So we're going to make sure that we're working with F sharp. Now I can close the editor. Let's turn off flex in the timeline. It's still been applied. I'm just not going to be looking at it right now. And what I want to do is separate these into individual notes. So I could go through with my scissors and cut or we could just strip the silence, which is a much better option. So we'll strip the silence. Make sure we get the entire note. So again, I'll adjust that threshold just a little bit to be sure I'm getting the entire note. Let me back it up by one, because that way we'll hear each individual note. And when we press a key on our keyboard to play the note, we'll make sure it starts immediately. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to say OK. And now if I play these. Uh, uh. Uh. Okay, it sounds good. If I needed to make any adjustments, I could go through and extend them. But for this example, we don't need that. And then I'm going to select which notes I want to use for my instrument. And I will just put all of these in. And then what will happen is we'll assign a keyboard note to the first note. And then the rest of them as we play, they will play whatever comes sequentially after that. So now that I have these all selected, I'm going to right click again on the track and come down to where it says convert and we can convert them to a new sampler track. That means that each individual region will become a new sample assigned to a key on the MIDI keyboard. So I'll click convert and now it's asking us what we want to convert. I'm going to say regions and what do we want to name this instrument? Well, we'll call it vocal instrument Emily scale. Now it asks us what our first triggered note is. Well, our trigger note, instead of zero, which is a very low octave, let's go to go down further into our keyboard and let's do an F sharp number two. There we go. Let's try that one. F sharp number two. And there we have it. And now it'll automatically go all the way to G8. So it's going to figure out where to place the other notes based on what we have here. There will be an instrument with 16 zones. And we'll say OK. There is my scale. There is my MIDI instrument. Let me just play a little bit of the track. Uh, uh, uh. And if I go up to my window and say show musical typing, here's the keyboard with my notes. Notice this is C2. Uh, so there's my first note, F2. Uh, 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 uh. Pretty cool, huh? So in just a few seconds, you can convert your vocal track into an instrument that you can then save and play on other tracks.